Hello, hey, and how are you? Welcome to another episode of this fantastic podcast we like to call Slightly Warped. I'm Rick. I'm joined, as always, by Big Show. Show, how are you? I am all right. A little oh. tired, but I'm okay. I know the feeling. Uh, you be getting them walks in every day, so I know you're tired. But, I try to. Hey, it's it's making a difference. Even when you don't think so, it's making a difference. So, um, if you guys are new to this podcast, we talk about various topics every week. And we like to make you think. We like to uh, say what's on our minds. We like to make you laugh. Uh, and then some stuff in between. And uh, we just like you to hang out with us. But I would really appreciate yes. feedback. So if you are watching on YouTube, the lovely podcast, make sure that you uh, leave us a like and a comment as well. Let us know what we can uh, do in the future, what you like, what you don't like. Hey, this doesn't work without you. If you're on any of our streaming platforms, make sure that you email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com I, I always check the emails so I will always respond as soon as possible so show yes sir just a real quick note I mean we're not going to delve into the NFL for another couple of weeks but uh, the preseason has started uh, your thoughts on your team and their game didn't watch it didn't watch it so anything you've heard or anything that uh, would make you um, any kind of concern for the Kansas City Chiefs going into the season yet? Nah. I said I, I just, no. Good I don't deal. put a, too, a whole lot of stock in the preseason. I don't either. And, and I do want to say this because I've seen a lot of people on social media, and it's not just the Chiefs. It's all kinds of teams. The teams that lost their preseason games, people were like, oh, this season, da, 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 da. Uh, just pump the brakes. Teams don't win Super Bowls based on the preseason. Okay? They don't. Foundation gets laid, but yes. they don't win. Um, you'll get a better idea of what your team's are in this upcoming week, uh, normally the week two. That's where most of your starters will play a half, depending on how the game is scored and things like that. Agreed. Um, and and just to reiterate that, I've seen teams go 4-0 and in the preseason and stink up the joint in the regular season. I've seen teams go 0-4 and in the preseason and win the Super Bowl. So, yeah, don't. Don't put stock into it. Yeah, no. back when they had four games. That's true. Only uh, one team nowadays gets four games, whoever plays the Hall of Fame game. Yep. So, well, two um, teams. The two teams uh, that yeah, play yeah, the yeah. Hall of Fame game. Uh, look at that. I already discounted the losing team. Shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, segue in from sports. Uh, into the hot topic, I told you that kids, uh, they don't, they don't have it like we used to back in the day. Um, I, and, and this just came across because I was talking to uh, a few people at work and we just, we kind of got a laugh because we started talking about the things that kids are missing out on nowadays and um it, it just it, there's a lot of things uh we we over encourage uh, into uh the pre and uh post adolescent changes uh parents shoe responsibility uh i've seen a lot of them put it on the school and then the school will turn around and not necessarily eschew the responsibility, but they are limited in what they can do by law 
And, you know, nowadays for fear of being sued by said parents. So things get lost. Uh, the ball gets dropped, so to speak. And um, even in their free time, I noticed that kids don't do the same things that we do. I mean, there are kids that you tell them to go outside, they act like you've given them a prison sentence. And I know technology and all that good stuff and uh, everybody wants to play their video games or be on their smartphone. But I honestly believe that kids need to just be kids for a minute. You know what I'm saying, Shell? I do. Um, I don't know how different it would be if we grew up in, uh, you know, with the same technology that the kids nowadays have. You know, our, mm -hmm. I think when you say parents shake responsibility, you know, the parents nowadays, um, you know, just let the, the TV or the device uh, entertain their children it was the same when we was kids the only difference was you take your ass outside don't come back till the street lights come on right you know you know they still didn't necessarily no you know some parents did hover you know helicopter parents but you know for the most part it was just you know get out of my face i don't want to see you till dinner time or whatever and be mm -hmm. gone that's kind of how it was. So it's to me, it's it's the same but different. Yeah, um, and and I think I want to go back real quick to where I said uh, we over encourage these pre and adolescent kids, uh, and we push them in certain directions too. Um, I want to read something real quick to you. You see this picture. Uh, I've actually seen this. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you you I know where I'm getting ready to go with this. Yes. Okay, so all right, I'm 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 going to go ahead and read this, and uh, for all you people that are able to watch on YouTube, uh, just look at both pictures of her, and you'll see where I'm going with this. Uh, my feelings of being in the wrong body started when I was a toddler. I hated girl toys, and I only wanted to play with boys. I had short hair and dressed myself like a boy. I didn't understand other girls my age, so I felt out of place. When someone would mistake me for a boy, I would feel so good, much to the chagrin of my older sister, who would quickly correct them and exclaim, that's my sister. At four, four years old, I worked up the courage to ask my mom, does God make mistakes because I think I was supposed to be born a boy? My mother replied, no, God doesn't ever make mistakes. He made you exactly the way you're supposed to be, a beautiful little girl. Now, remember that point there. All right. And that was that. I didn't have any more delusions because my mom cleared it up for me right then and there. Don't get me wrong. I still didn't like my body and I dreaded growing breasts one day, but I didn't have to question if there was something wrong with me, I was allowed time to grow up. And once I hit puberty, I not only felt like I was in the right body, but I became a girly girl. And this goes on to say, if I was born in our society today, I know I would have been affirmed by my teachers and started on a cascade of interventions that would have left me infertile, mutilated, and without the husband and the two beautiful children that I have today. Our kids don't need to be socially or medically transitioned. They need to be left alone and they need time to grow up. And her name was Brittany Trainer. Her name is Brittany Trainer. So this does is the exactly she is. It does not, but Assume since she has a uh, husband and two kids, I'm assuming she's in her 20s by uh, at least. Um, I, I, mean, I feel yeah, like obviously I know she's an adult. I was just curious because it makes a difference in what era you grew up in as well as a child. 
Yeah, and that, and that's why I like the fact she said if she was born in 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 today's generation, uh, it it probably wouldn't be that case, and and it's sad because that's, you know, ten years or less removed, you know, from yeah, but I think you have to look at it too is <clears throat> those parents mm-hmm. that. In modern in today's society, were the children of the 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 parents that started the movement, i.e., everyone should get a ribbon. There, nobody's a win. Everybody's a winner. Mm-hmm. Everybody gets a participation trophy. That kind of crap. Yeah. So you have as a kid. That's how they were raised or or brought up in that type of thinking and society wise, and then now they're parents, and now everything is being accepted, you know um yeah i I, I do agree um, children need to be allowed or the time given the time to actually grow and mature and then decide, you know, if, you know, if you're 20 years old and you decide you still don't want to be whatever gender you're going to be, it's your prerogative to change that. And you know what it is, but I'll always say, I mean, I'm just using that as an example, but I will always say, you know, if you take a, uh, a steer, Mm -hmm. a bull, Okay, and you <laughs> castrate him because mm-hmm. you don't want him to get all the cows pregnant. That's uh, that's only one one bull's job, right? Right. That doesn't automatically make him a cow because you clipped his nuts. You know, it's genetically involved that you know they're male or female, and we're the only animals on the planet that have that problem. Yes. And, and and going back to what you just said a few minutes ago, I don't even want to just make it into a gender issue. These kids that run around talking about I'm a furry, I identify as a cat, dog, yeah. whatever. Those parents need to be slapped. There is no way you should let your child think that, period. There's no excuse for that. There's none. And And, and I'll go back a step further. When you were talking about the participation awards, Anybody who says, oh, they all need to feel uh, encouraged, they all need to know. Everybody should feel encouraged playing the sport. The person who wins the sport gets the award. That's not a slight on the child that didn't. You're doing the child that didn't win a disservice because later on in life, they're going to feel entitled even though they're not getting their way. A la today's society. Mm Mm-hmm. Ah, all right. I'm going to get off my soapbox on that. I oh, know. Stay on it. <laughs> Don't come <laughs> off that sucker. <laughs> well, I'm I'll, sure, I'll, come off, I'll come off for this show here. I'm, but, I'm sure that we're not the only ones that feel that. Now, I also want to say, I want to take the moment to say, to each their own. Mm-hmm. I am not condemning uh you know you if you feel like if you're a grown person and you feel like you're a dog then by all means let me chain you up outside i'll feed you a couple times a year and we'll just we'll just play it like that you know that's why i don't have animals but i'm just saying you know if that's what you want then that's what you want i mean that's that's the great thing about this country we kind of get to do what we want however being a child, that that type of behavior should not be condoned and or um, affirmed. Exactly. In my in my humble opinion, I, I, and I respect that opinion. Speaking I like of I opinions. like that I like that girl's you know parent who said you know God doesn't make mistakes. Amen. And that's true. Now, before I get off of this subject. Everybody has an opinion and everybody's entitled to their opinion, like Big Show said. So that being said, I want to hear from you guys. 
drop us a line, leave us a comment, and let us know. Do you agree with us? Do you not? If you disagree with us, let's hear your point of view because you may be on to something that we haven't thought about. And I respect everybody's opinion. I respect everybody's thoughts. You know, at the end of the day, we might still agree to disagree, but the respect is always going to be there. Oh, yes. Let's let's leave reality and go to fantasy here. We, we've been talking about Game of Thrones for the last couple of weeks. I know two weeks <laughs> yes. ago we did talk about season one and uh, we did speak on season two. Uh, and we wanted to go week by week, season by season. Now, um, just to bring everybody up to speed. Uh, if you're not familiar with Game of Thrones, it's the... Uh, fantasy drama series that uh, has been on HBO since what 2013 mm -hmm. am I right yeah um the Starks the Lannisters the Targaryens am I missing a, a royal family there I mean I'm missing a lot of them because there was what uh all right well those were the main ones but yeah. you had the Baratheons mm -hmm. in this season three you learn I mean you learn more about the phrase and the Boltons yeah. The High Towers, the Tullys. Now, just a quick recap of season two. Uh, Ned's eldest son, Rob, takes Jamie prisoner, uh, Lannister, uh, and declared war on the Lannisters. His mother, Caitlin, sends Brienne of Tarth uh, to escort Jamie to King's Landing, where she believes she can trade him for her daughters. Uh, in King's Landing, Sansa is frequently abused by Joffrey. I'm going to get back to that in a minute because that went into season three as well. And uh, uh, the youngest Lannister child, uh, Tyrion, works with Cersei to prepare for Stannis uh, Baratheon's upcoming attack on the capital. And the attack eventually occurs, but despite Stannis' best efforts, he ultimately failed. And having escaped, Arya finds herself trapped in uh, Hall, serving as a cupbearer to Lannister patriarch Tywin, uh, those names, uh, but manages to escape. Uh, Ned's ward, Theon uh, Greyjoy, betrays Rob and takes Winterfell for himself, forcing Bran and uh, youngest Stark child, Rickon, to flee for the Wall. And beyond the Wall, Jon gains the trust of the Wildlings, while Samuel Tarly encounters the White Walkers. That was my favorite part of the uh, season, by the way. And uh, Daenerys, my favorite character on there, uh, and her uh, Kalisar uh, find refuge in Quarth, but Daenerys had her dragons stolen, and she recovers them and steals some wealth and leaves the city. That's a nutshell wrap-up of season two as we go to season three. Um... Was there anything that stood out for you in season two? Uh, nothing more than what we talked about last week. Okay. What about season three? Since we go into it, um, like I mentioned, at, at this time, I believe it was Sam was the only one to see the White Walker. But we finally got a glimpse of the White Walker or a few of them. So we knew that something more was building. We knew something more was coming. Uh, at this point, we didn't know how much more. Um, well, he's seen the army of the dead. He, you know, it wasn't just the fact that he's seen a White Walker because John killed one in Mormont's. Uh, they are at the castle in season one. Um, when when one of their ranger guys came back to life after they found him, you know. So they knew that's why the, that's why the the what they call them the Night's Watch that's why they took yeah. that group you know north of the wall and 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 why John fell in with with the wildlings. That's but yes, right. you got to see you got to see the bigger picture of all you know. Winter was was indeed heading south. <laughs> yes. Um, season three, I think, was one of my favorite seasons. 
um, because a lot happened, you know, mm-hmm. from Tyrion and Sansa getting married to the Red Wedding to the issues in Slaver's Bay with Daenerys. Uh, oh, that's right. The Unsullied. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I really enjoyed that, that, that whole season. You know, I think that's this season is when, if I'm not mistaken, when John and them climbed the wall, waiting on Mance Raider to, to initiate his first attack or whatever. Yeah. If I'm um, correct, was it season three that Rob was killed? Yeah, at the Red Wedding. Yes. Okay. It, it Rob, season. his... And basically, you know, for those that don't necessarily know um, what happened, you know, Rob Stark, to get to get his troops, there's this... There's this uh, a family called the Freys, and they own the towers. It's the only bridge that gets you from one part of land to the other part of land. Um, and he needed to, so he could battle the, the the Lannisters. He needed to get his host across that tower. He agreed to marry one of the daughters of Frey. Um, after they passed, he fell in love with one of the doctors. He married her in secret. Um, they were now on their way back, needed to recross the towers again, and he basically broke his betrothal to um, the phrase. They forgave him because he offered his, I believe it was his uncle, uh, Edard, Edard Tolley, I think his name is, to uh, marry one of the daughters mm-hmm. of Frey. And then during... So they have what they call a betting ceremony once the vows have been said, and that's where all the women take the men, the man, the bride or the groom. They start stripping him down and taking him to the room. All the men do the same with the woman, strip her down, take her to the room, and that's where they're supposed to consummate the marriage because until that's happened, they're not theoretically married. Right. Um, as this was happening. I believe they were playing oh, i gotta look it up it's a it's a song that they they talk about a lot it's called the reigns of castamere and caitlin Stark or catlin Stark, she realized what was going on and by the time she realized it was too late the phrase turned on rob stark and the rest of them ended up killing him killed catlin stark as well um if you read the book she knew it was coming but yeah. to see it in the show, because at the time I hadn't read the books that far in. So that was a very shocking scene to me. Um, but one of my favorites um, out of the series. Now, let me ask you this, because I'm one of the people that still has not read the books. Uh, for season three, was it, did it entirely follow the book? Um. Yes and no. This is kind of where it starts to steer off a little bit. The problem with the books is season two and season three are basically the second book. Basically. Okay. A lot of stuff that happens in season three of the show is still happening in the book, uh, which is called Clash of the Kings, I believe. And I believe the third book is Feast of Crows. But... um or a storm of swords. I I I I I forget which order they're in, but uh, it, you could gave me any title. I'm not a word for it. Yeah, it, it kind. This is kind of where it steers off, and the main reason is because the books aren't finished, so the show had to go in a particular direction. How many books are there in the series right now? There are five that are written, and there are there's supposed to be a total of seven. Now these books are not small books; they are eight hundred to fifteen hundred pages in length, depending on the book. Hmm. So theoretically, they could have still followed the book. At, at, no, at, they could not because have. at. Because at the time that the show came out, 
these other books that are now written in 2024 mm -hmm. weren't published. Oh, okay, okay. Now, uh, now I follow you. Okay, so that makes a difference. Right. So, so it's so they were, but they weren't. Like George R. R. Martin gave them. Um, he gave them direction ideas of go. what's yeah. going to happen, but you know, you don't really, his, his, his idea of what happened isn't necessarily coincided with uh, the show itself, but for the most part, they're, they're, they're about the same, but this is kind of where it starts taking a detour. Okay. So trying to think how, how, how to put this uh, because, you know, we're three seasons in mm -hmm. and at this point when we were watching originally, we didn't know how many seasons there were going to be. Mm -hmm. um, as someone who had not watched, I mean, had not read any of the books yet uh, and, and you weren't sure where it was taking you, how would you rate the third season? Oh man, A plus. I mean, it was the storytelling. The whole season, the whole series gets double A's for me. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, the storytelling in season three, and I want to go to season four as well, were phenomenal. Um, because you start like in season three. That's when we first get introduced to Ramsey Bolton, who is the most hideous person that i think villain that's ever been played on television that's in my personal right. opinion he i mean um now he what was sansa's of, sansa's husband um which one i'm, I'm trying Tyrion to and joffrey her husband that that abused her was ramsey bolton the guy we're talking about uh, i thought the one of the other ones was mean to her too well, Joffrey initially was the yeah the king, but yeah, he was he was a dick. But nobody was as bad nope. as uh, Bolton yeah, was. Ram so Ramsey, the Bolton uh, sigil, which is their flag, is mm -hmm. oh, that's right, the filleted man, an upside down filleted men, which basically means they fillet your skin while you're alive. You know, they, mm. they their whole thing is torture, and you know when the when the uh well they call them the the not the great joys but the iron island guys yes at, at the end of season two when they decided mm -hmm. or it might have been beginning of season three when they when ramsey bolton was tasked to go take winterfell back yes. from theon the the iron island guys turned on theon gave theon to the boltons so they could go back to the iron islands and mm -hmm. then that's when ramsey bolton um, was a complete dick. Now, you're asking me about difference between the show and the story, and I know we'll get more onto this in in, in season four because that's when Theon is con you know initially broken. Uh, yes. But in this se in this season, when he's being broken, you know Theon was a whore, a male whore. He loved you know he loved girls, and the whole thing about the Iron Islands is. You get yourself a salt wife, you know, you can, they were basically Vikings. That was kind of like, if you had their, you know, their personality, that's what they were. Well, Greyjoy, you know, gave him a, 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 a sexual um, surgery, uh, removed his penis and Astrated. sent it to his dad. Yeah. Well, no, he still had his nuts. Well, yeah, that's uh, right. He, he, he lost the, <laughs> he, uh... he, he, yeah, he, he took his penis. Yeah. And, uh, you know, send it to his dad. Um, but where I was telling what I was going to tell you is, you know, how he forced Theon to call himself Reek. That's right. Treated him like a dog, act like a dog. Now, in the books, Reek is an actual character. It is not Theon. Mm. Wow. So that's I kind, that's kind that. of where it changed. That's kind of where it changed, you know, one of the ch changes in the book. So um now now yeah. is Theon so, still abused like this in the books? I haven't I haven't fully gotten all that far, but from what I read, okay. he does get tortured. 
but he is not the uh it's not it's not necessarily exactly how we see it in the show okay but Ramsey Bolton one of these also days to I the, might, you know, pick up one of them books. Audio books is the best way to do it while you're running, brother. I mean, you'll get you'll, hey. you'll get caught up pretty quick. Um, like that. But like when, uh, you know, just kind of give the backstory to the people watching, you know, Ramsey Bolton, he liked to he likes to play games. So basically he came to Theon as he was being abused and everything and then basically pretended that he was going to help him that he was being sent from his sister to help him helped him escape and then hunted him down <laughs> just so he could recapture him again uh you know ramsey yeah he very sick sadist uh individual yes he was great uh, character though great character mm-hmm. great character though even yeah, though he's he that one he person no one matter who you were you'd love to hate that kind of person yeah he yeah. was definitely one of my favorite characters. My all-time favorite character of the show is Sansa. But really, uh, yeah, really, and we'll that's dis- my we'll least dis- favorite. We'll dis- we'll, 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 uh, as we get towards the seventh and eighth season, when we we'll get find to the why. end, I will change your mind. I think her little sister was cold, though. I liked Arya. Yeah, that's a whole nother. She's we, a whole different we, character. We will get. Yeah, we well. will get to that too. Because cause her growth uh, will really take off. And, and that's what impressed me. Um, um, I would say during the third season, I really didn't have any favorites yet. I knew who was who and what was going on. And just like you, I was encompassed by it. And up to that point, the third season w- was the best, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. And, you know, your favorite, you said, was Daenerys, right? I mean, yeah. she was up. She was up there at this time for me as well. Um, but me, after being where I see in all of the seasons, uh, Sansa is my favorite. But you, the, you know, t- you loved you loved the storyline of Daenerys, and you wanted her, excuse me, to be successful. Yes. Until that last season, the last few episodes, but we we will we will get there in time. I I don't I don't. It's not like we're spoiling anything. This, this is a decade old, but hey, um, we'll take it slow. So that's where we are on season three. We are going to dive into season four next week. Got lots of goodies for everybody. We're going to keep it coming. And 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 this time I can say it, next week is a TCT, True Crime Thursday. Frank Lucas, y'all. Frank Lucas. What was that movie that Denzel played in? Ameri- what was it called? American, American Gangster. Gangster. American Gangster. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, real quickly before we mm-hmm. get off of the GOT, uh, I do, this is a spoiler for you because you would never know because after the Red Wedding series, you mm-hmm. never really think about those characters ever again. Mm-hmm. In the books, and this is where I say it's rough, Catelyn Stark did not die. She hmm. did get her throat slit, just like in the wedding. But as you as you come to find out, um, like uh, later on when Don when, you, when uh, the Hound met Don Darian and they fought, and then the priest dude brought him back to life, type of thing. Yeah, that's what happened to Catelyn Stark. But she came back not being able to speak, and mm. she was she was a very cold-hearted person. Um, mm. That I I recommend reading the books. I, that's all I can say is this, she's not dead in the book lore of Game of Thrones. She is dead in the series, television wise. I, I might have to take you up on that and start the audio thing, uh, not just while I'm running, but uh, probably a little bit of here and there while I'm working too, so I can you know get caught up on that and reacquainted with Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's how I get through my walks, man. As as, as, as you know, audio books, and I'm rereading those books, so I'm like halfway through the second book. Excellent. All right, you got anything else before we get on up out of here? No, I think that'll do it. Appreciate you guys for watching. 
uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell. Let us know, uh, or it'll let you know when, when Rick puts something out there. And we appreciate uh, you guys tuning in weekly. We'll see you next week. Hug your loved ones tomorrow, it's not promise. Amen. See you guys later. Amen.